rise up against you. But David overcame. And the Spirit of the Lord. So when you're under your worst attack is when you should kick in to become your best Christian. Amen. See. That's why I didn't, you know, you know, God makes a way there, there seemeth no way. And the moment all of a sudden you're going through something, God begins to step in and says, enough is enough. I'll take over from here. Why? Because God wants to know that you've got something on the inside of you, which is a praise, and that you're not going to allow the devil to take out of your heart. Because when you get through the things that you're going through, you're not going to have to be taught how to praise God. I mean, there's already going to be something on the inside of you that is a bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Amen. When the children of Israel came across the Red Sea, they picked up the tambourine and they started singing the song of Moses. They had a hallelujah camp meeting. Well, they sang the right song, but how many know that they sang it on the wrong side? See, anybody can praise the Lord after a victory. God don't need us when we, after a victory's all over, oh, thank you, Lord. No, God wants to know, is there a praise on the inside of you, even when you find it strange that fiery trials are coming against you? That I've got something on the inside of me that's been, you know, planted that I have all of a sudden that's growing and that's my praise. And I'm never going to let no devil take the praise out of me. Amen. Amen. Why? Because you've seen his power. And where did you see God's power? You saw God's power in your problems. Hallelujah. Do you hear what I'm saying? See, God wants you to see his power in your problems. That's why his strength is always made perfect in what? In your weakness. So when all hell seems to start coming against you, God's going to show up. Knowing that no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. Hallelujah. See? And many times we say, Lord, don't let this weapon be formed. Huh? Huh? You know, how many times have we been in our, in our job place and we go, oh, God, I go, God, oh, God, get me out of this work. Get me out of this. I can't stand my boss. I can't stand the people that we're working with. Where does it say that God's only going to bless you in the church? The Bible doesn't say that God's just going to bless you in the church. How many know that God can create a blessing right in an ungodly environment? God can make the devil bless you good. Amen. Yeah, Daniel, man, Daniel made the devil pay his tithe. That's right. Whatever this Christian boy says, boys, you better obey him. So where did it come from? Let me finish here. Where did it come from? See. Where did this come from? He said, we didn't sow this. So the Lord said the enemy had done this. Unexpected things came because the enemy had done this. They came because you were about to be productive. God allows them to come so you can learn the integrity of what he has placed on the inside of you. His word. And the devil wants to steal the integrity of God's word. This is why God wants you to learn faith. Listen, God wants you to learn faith in a moment. Did you hear what I said? He wants you to learn faith in a moment. You don't have time to wait. You need faith in a moment. Faith now. I need it in the moment. See. So, unexpected situations. Let's look at the word here. So he says, just doesn't always know where it comes from. But all of a sudden, you know, listen. What did he say to them? Should we go out and do what? Pull out the bad seed. Now, this is something that I've had to learn in all the years walking with the Lord. Because when you know that you didn't sow something and you know that you sowed good stuff, 
but yet bad stuff's coming out at the same time you sowed the good. If you're like my nature, I want to get my hands in it and try to fix it. Thank you for your honesty. Come on. And how many times God will say, and it's like you said to me, just leave it alone. Look at somebody and say, no matter what you're going through right now, get your hands off of it and let it go. Just leave it alone. In other words, you got to let the good and the bad grow together. Because why? Because if it's like you or I, we're going to get in there and we're going to try to pull out this bad seed, but what's going to happen is we're going to go out and we're going to start pulling out good stuff along with the bad. And God says, I don't want you to pull out the good. I want you to leave the good alone and I'll take care of the bad at its proper time. So you got to let things go instead of getting your hands into everything and trying to fix everything, just thinking that you can always take care of everything. You can fix it yourself. God says, I don't need you to fix it. Just leave it alone. I had a younger son one time, brought up in the church, gets out of high school, comes to me, and he says, I think I'm going to cruise for a year. I said, oh, yeah? And whose house are you going to cruise in? <laughs> well, here. I said, boy, you ain't cruising in this home. I said, if you're going to cruise, you go find yourself an apartment somewhere because you're not going to be cruising and doing nothing because I already knew what was going to take place in the midst of the cruising. You know what I'm talking about. So what happens? He gets in all kinds of, you know, problems because he's cruising. He wants to sow some wild oats and, you know, and get all that stuff going on. And I told him, I said, no. I said, son, let me just tell you, let's just be real plain and real clear here. I said, if you get caught for drinking or you get a DUI and you get thrown in jail, don't bother calling. You wouldn't do that. I said, let me tell you something, boy. I said, and then, see, I had to get into agreement with my wife. Because mama wants to be Perry Mason. You know what I'm talking about? She likes to be the defense and the prosecuting attorney all at one time. And I told him, I said, Michael, I said, listen, if you get caught, I said, don't call. You will spend the night in jail. And I told my wife, I said, honey, we've got to be in agreement here. Yes. We have to be in agreement. Yes. See? And he started getting caught up in that. He started getting caught up in drugs. He started getting caught up in everything, you know, and, and all kinds of stuff. And, and then, uh, you know, it, it just got to be a real mess because he wanted to do his thing. And I said, you will not put me or your mom in this house as a prisoner, we refuse to it. You're going to call. You're, I don't care if you're 50 years old. You're living under my roof. You're going to obey my rules. Amen. You know, listen, when I grew up and my father called me, I didn't say, what did you want? And when my father said something, I just said, can we sit down and talk about this? Are you kidding me? I would have had dentures at seven years old. Uh-uh. I mean, there ain't no negotiating with a three-year-old, you know. Okay, let's move on here. See, you have to be very careful because a lot of times, see, we want quick fixes and we want to be able to fix things and get things done. But you know what? There was a situation and we had to go out of town. And he had some friends and my wife got, I mean, she, she got upset. She blew a cork because what had happened was our youngest son, he comes home and he's, you know, I could tell. Listen, once a drug addict, you can tell. I could tell. I looked at his eyes. His eyes were all dilated. My wife knew it. Of course, she had put up with me for all those years before I got saved. She says, I want you to get in there and you tell that boy, I want him out. This is it. We are not leaving town tomorrow without it. That's it. Do you understand me? 